Buenas noches, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Boozing with Jude. Jude, are you trying to talk Spanish? Si. Speak a little bit better Spanish than French. Bonsoir. Because it's International Week on Boozing with Jude. At least in my head, it's International Week. I work in international education, and that means that I have colleagues, let's be honest, all over the world. Not that I'm bragging. And I was speaking to one of them, who is from Santiago in Chile, about Pisco. So today I'm going to do the Pisco Sour. Jude, what is Pisco? Well, I'm going to tell you that in a minute, but first I'm going to tell you about how I discovered Pisco and when I started drinking Pisco. And when I lived in London, not that I'm bragging, I used to uh, walk to a place called Atolengi every, sun, every Saturday to get some exercise. I would walk from um, Trafalgar Square down to the east end of London, and Otto Lange's is a fantastic place in Spitalfields Market, or near Spitalfields Market. Mr. Otto Lange is well known. He has several restaurants, really classy, great, outstanding restaurants. He also has amazing cookbooks out. His cookbooks are too complicated for me. I don't cook too well. I cook for myself. It's really good. But, you know, I look at that stuff and go, no, I, I'm just going to go to the restaurant and, you know, pay for that. But uh, this place was great for its salads for lunch. And they got to know me. They'd sit me at the bar. And every once in a while, I get a free latte as well, order a couple salads. And, and they had this amazing menu of cocktails, uh, just different ones all the time. And I started out drinking this saffron champagne drink. It was amazing. Oh, my God. I loved it. I had one every Saturday. And then I'd have a couple salads. Yummy. Um, let's not get into the food because this is a drink show, but oh my God, the salads were great. So then one day the bartender who, who got to know me quite well said, would you like to try something different? I'm like, oh man, I don't know. I love this little saffron champagne deal that I'm drinking. He said, trust me, I did. So he made me what was called a Cisco Pisco. I can't tell you what it is. I just know it had Pisco in it. And it's Mr. Otto Lange's creation. He changes his menu. I looked on the internet. I can't find the ingredients, but I do know that at the end of it, it was a takeoff from the sour, clearly, but they put a lot of herbs in the glass and a lot of crushed ice. It was so good. Okay, so that's me and Pisco. What is Pisco? Hmm, okay. Pisco basically is, um, what are we going to say, a, a brandy. It's a South American brandy. So it's made from the grape. So basically, it's it's a common wine that they take, and then they it, they make it, they, well, they make it separately. It's, it's Peruvian. Oh, no, 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 wait. It's Chilean. No, 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 it's Peruvian. Oh, no, 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 it's Chilean. Jude, what are you doing? I don't know. It's both. They both claim that it's their national drink, that they discovered it, that they created it. But, you know, they're not fighting a war over it. They just learn to get along. So it's made differently in both places. Unfortunately, for my Santiago friends, I could only find Peruvian Pisco. Couldn't find any from Chile, and and I looked. Believe me, I looked. They had all sorts of brands. So today I'm going with the Machu Pisco, which is from Peru, because I've always wanted to go to Machu Picchu. But you know, it's a it's a bucket list thing. So what's the difference? Okay, in Peru, even the even the Pisco sour is made differently. Eh, okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. In Peru, okay, the Pisco can be made from one of eight different grapes, or it can be you know. Um, Blended, I think, together. I might be wrong, but I think it can be. I don't know. At any rate, one of eight different grapes, and it has to come from five different regions. You know what? I'm not an expert on this. I'm just trying to give you a little interest, a little interesting tidbits about it. So in Peru, it can only be distilled once. The alcohol by volume of the Pisco in Peru is usually a little bit less than the, the, the alcohol by volume of the Chilean ones. And um, they usually distill it in a copper like pot or copper kettle. Um, now, when you go to Chile... The alcohol by volume, by the way, on this one is 40%. That's pretty potent, but it's like your gin, it's like your vodka, whatever. Um, you go to Chile, and um, they can take it from even a few lesser grapes. I think there's only two varietals of grapes they can use. Muscat is one of them. Um, and they can distill it multiple times, whereas in Peru, they can't add anything. Whatever goes in that bottle is made from those grapes, okay? Nothing else is added, right? And in Chile, they can add some derivatives, mostly probably because it needs some dilution, given the fact that it's going to have a high ABV. Um, and they actually, the older ones that they might um, age for over 180 days, uh, up to two years, could be uh, 
aged in uh, oaken bucket, oaken barrels from either the United States or France. And so if you're going to look for one just to sip, my guess would be, although I couldn't find one, that the Chilean one would be nice to sip neat or even just on, on the rocks because if it's aged in those oaken barrels, it would be much more of a rounded taste. So um, what's the difference between the Pisco Sour? Okay, I read this and you guys from Santiago, you might come back and, you know, slap me around a little bit and say I got it totally wrong. The Pisco Sour in Peru is uh, made with lime juice. And if you can get key limes, great. Um, and the egg white. Remember when we did the whiskey sour and we did the dry shake to get it frothy? We'll do that tonight. Um, whereas I think the Pisco Sour in Chile is made with lemon juice, and I don't think they have the egg white. Okay, so I'm going with lime juice tonight, and I'm going to use the egg white because I love the way it froths up. I'm sorry if you guys don't do that in Chile. It's really cool. You should try it. And um, simple syrup. I did. This was my own little creation. This this drink lends itself to like some herbs. So I infuse my simple syrup with thyme. Yum e. So simple syrup, remember one part sugar, one part, um, or equal part sugar and water. I just put some thyme in there, let it steep, then let it sit for a day in the refrigerator. And it's, um, what can I say? It's outstanding. And it's gonna go really well in this drink. So, and then we'll top it with some Angostura bitters at the end. How to serve it. I've seen it up neat, I've, or not neat, I've seen it up, I've seen it in champagne glasses. I'm going to use a rocks glass and do it over ice. Okay, I just want to, and um, because I think that seems to be more common, but we'll see. Um, we'll see how it goes. I think it's going to be great. I'm pretty sure it's going to be great. And uh, we'll do the dry shake, which means um, the first shake we do will be without ice um, to froth up and, and to break down those egg white proteins, because, you know, it's really going to drink, but here it is. It's kind of disgusting. I'm not going to show it to you, but you know what an egg white looks like. Ew. Okay, so let's go. Um, first of all, no ice in the shaker to start with. We'll do the dry shake. Um, ice is melting away here. It is a hot one today. Max, she's out like a light. I took her up north. That means up north to Michigan for two days, you know, where she swam and swam and chased people and knocked people over. She's really tired. So one day I got to bring her back. So let's start with this. Machu Picchu, Machu Pisco. Um, this is made with a, a grape they call the Quebranta grape. I don't know what that means, but that's the grape it's made from. And we're going to do two ounces of the Machu Pisco. So I only have my ounce thing out here, so I'll have to do two of these babies. And that's one. Uh, do we drink? Did we drink Pisco much here in the United States? Actually, the first time they started drinking Pisco was in San Francisco during the gold rush. Back in the day before they had the uh, Panama Canal, the ships going up to California used to have to go around the south um, of South America. And on the way, they would pick up things like cachaça from Brazil, which we will use to make a drink coming up, another international drink for International Week. And they would stop in either Chile or Peru. I don't want to fight about it and pick up some pisco. They would get some tequila from Mexico and then they would go up to San Francisco and they were drinking it. Now, then it went out of fashion, probably because of the way transportation goes. And it, but it's come back, big resurgence with the craft cocktail movement. So don't want to forget we're in. One ounce of, sorry, we're going with lime juice. Like I said, if you can get um, key lime and squeeze about 40 of those to get an ounce, it probably would taste really great in here. I'm going to dump in this disgusting egg white. Don't look. And then this, the thyme infused simple syrup. You don't have to do this. It doesn't call for it. But you know what? I love it. And that's only a half ounce. Um, unless you like your sours a little bit sweeter but there you go. So first of all, we're going to do our dry shake, right? I think I got everything in there. I'm going to use my crystal glass. It's International Week from Slovakia. Uh, so we'll use it. We'll do it on the rocks. Here we go. We're going to shake this really good. Ooh, ooh that could have been bad. Well, what's going on with my Boston shaker here? Scary. Um, we want to break up that egg white. So it doesn't look at all like it looked when I poured it. Okay. Remember, I'm having problems with my Boston shaker and getting the cover up, but I still like it. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. And it makes the drink really foamy. I splashed something on myself. My glasses, I need like a little windshield wiper off. Now we're going to put some ice in it, which has been sitting here melting because, quite frankly, it, uh, it's hot. Okay, so...
You want to give it a good 15 seconds or so. Like my new shirt, Michigan home. That's that's the Lower Peninsula. That's the Upper Peninsula. I was just there up on Lake Superior with my dog. Who cares, dude? Make the drink. Okay. Maybe we should. Uh, not always easy with this. I should just do a show alone on what is the best stainless steel cocktail thing to do here because I'm not too good at it. So. We're going to put this, actually do, yeah, we're going to put uh, rocks on our glass. I'm a little off tonight, huh? Jude, where's the blue hair? That might help. I know, really. We're going to put, remember, remember that old thing, put as many as you can, as much ice as you can in the glass because it melts slower and it's going to melt quick tonight, even though I have the AC on, it's hot. It's uh, close to 90 degrees today, which is, you know what? Wow, I have more. Oh, I have too much ice in there. And then we're going to take the top and just put, a couple drops of Angostura bitters on it, like three, and I'm going to garnish it, which is really weird, with just a little bit of thyme to go with my thyme simple syrup. Have you ever had a drink garnished with thyme? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, tonight I dedicate this creamy egg white lime juice time infused Peruvian Pisco, Pisco Sour to my friends in Santiago, to Felipe, to whom I was speaking about this last week, Estela, I hope you drank, and Esteban in Santiago. Uh, here's to you guys. I think this is probably a little bit more Peruvian, but you know what? Here's to you guys all the same. Cheers. outstanding guys okay you got to do the time infused simple syrup it's really good it adds to the drink it's just so cool and uh it's refreshing it's there's nothing i mean it's potent it's potent drink but there's nothing potent tasting about it it's perfect on a 90 degree night or 32 celsius night mm. so next time i will do the Am I going to say this right? Caia Parinha from Brazil and dedicated to my colleagues in Brazil. But for now, a really yummy pisco sour. Go ahead and try it. I'm sure you'll like it. I'll catch you next time on Boozin' with Two. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.